Hey guys, JV here, and this marks my very first Destiny 2 tips and tricks video, and I am so excited to begin this journey with you all. I've got a lot of content planned for this first week and beyond. Just a heads up, this is your place for daily Destiny 2 content here on YouTube, so hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for Destiny 2 tips and tricks videos. Since the game just came out, I thought it would make sense to line out a few simple tips, helpful things to know for a head start in Destiny 2. Whether you're a veteran and played the first game, or you're just now getting into Destiny, these should be helpful for you. This first tip is very simple, but it's something that has changed from the first game and is fairly helpful when you're playing through the story. In Destiny 2, Bungie decided to switch up the way weapons are categorized. Instead of primary, secondary, and heavy weapons, we now have kinetic, energy, and power weapons. The kinds of weapons we'll find in each category are different now too. Kinetic and energy weapons represent the vast majority of weapons and share the same weapon types. For example, you'll find kinetic auto rifles as well as energy-based auto rifles. On the other hand, power weapons are in a class of their own. Fusion rifles, shotguns, and grenade launchers are exclusive to the power category, including many more, and are much more powerful than the other categories. Since power weapons are so strong, you'll want to know exactly how to get ammo and in Destiny 2 there is a very definite way of doing that, and that's by killing elite enemies. Any enemy with a yellow bar is considered elite in this game, and another way to tell is if they have some kind of fancy name attached to them, so if you see either of those you know you're fighting an elite. Oftentimes it makes sense to pull out your power weapon in order to defeat these enemies because they're not easy, and the good thing is that once you've killed them, there's a good chance that they will drop more power ammo for you. So you're essentially getting your ammo back if you decided to use your power ammo in the first place if it does drop. I was under the impression that it was guaranteed, but the more I've played through the game, the more I've realized there's a good chance that it drops. It doesn't seem to be guaranteed unless it's a glitch or something. So once again, this is a strategic thing to keep in mind. If you're encountering a public event or something that's very difficult, you need that power ammo. Target that elite enemy so you can get a chance to drop more. Next, we're talking about enemy shields. For most normal red health bar enemies, your kinetic weapon is just fine for taking them out. It gets more difficult when your enemy has a shield. There are three types of shields, one for each energy type in the game, same as the original. So we've got Void, which is purple, Arc, which is blue, and Solar, which is orange. You'll also be able to distinguish these three by the shape of the shield, and usually the enemy faction that you're facing has something to do with that as well. So Solar is kind of spherical, Arc is just kind of like a, a loose shape around the enemy, and then Void is this very defined square barrier. Like we talked about before, your energy and power weapons are the best ways to take out these shields, along with your class abilities as well. It really depends on your subclass. But you'll be able to tear through their outer layer and start dealing damage to their health using these methods. In Destiny 2, if you shoot an enemy whose shield type matches the energy type of your weapon and break the shield, it will cause an explosion of bonus damage, which will affect all nearby enemies caught in the blast. This is especially useful for clearing large groups of bad guys. So always, generally speaking, try to match the energy type of your weapon to the energy type of your enemy's shield if they do have one. And also don't forget, once you've busted their shield, be sure to kill the enemy very quickly because that shield will regenerate after a small period of time. So that should be your number one priority once the shield is down. Now let's talk about milestones. In the original Destiny, there were daily challenges which rewarded a little bit of experience to level up items and possibly a piece of gear. Also, this would be done after you completed the game, after the story is done. And the same general idea has returned in Destiny 2 with milestones, but this time around they are a bit different. For starters, you can actually do these as you level up through the story. They're not reserved for after the story is completed the first time. There are several different types of milestones, including but not limited to those in the Crucible, Flashpoints, in public event spaces, and Nightfall Strikes. The game makes it super easy to track these, as you can always pull up your director to see which milestones you have active. Also, you'll see a symbol next to any destination that has an active milestone. Shortly after starting the game around level 3 or 4, I want to say, you'll be given your first milestone at the farm, and this one is to complete two crucible matches, which is luckily very simple and easy to do. Depending on the faction or type of activity, you may receive special gear upon completion, or you may receive tokens, and we'll talk more about tokens in a second. So the main type of milestones, the ones we covered before, are cycled on a weekly basis, but there are also daily milestones like the one we have in the crucible. 
You'll want to make sure and complete these every single day in order to maximize your rewards. Also, for some reason, main missions are filed under milestones. I'm pretty sure that's just to remind you that you need to complete them, like that's a priority. And one more thing on milestones, once you've completed the story and hit max level, milestones are likely to be your primary source of upgrading gear. Those very small incremental changes. That's what really matters when you're trying to hit light level requirements for higher level activities like raids. So long story short, always do your milestones. Next, let's talk about reputation. There are many different factions in Destiny 2. I'm actually surprised how many I've come across so far, and all of them require you to complete tasks for them in order to gain reputation. Compared to the first game though, things work a little bit differently. One of the first factions that you meet and earn rewards for is the European Dead Zone, or EDZ. They are a faction of humans who are helping the Guardians after Gaul and the Red Legion destroyed the tower and the Traveler was lost and all of that. Devram K is our main contact and he's the key to raising our reputation. Every time you visit him, and this goes for every faction with reputation, you'll be able to track your rep with that faction by looking at the bar in the top right. So if you need to know what level you are, how close you are to leveling up that, you know, faction and getting another reward, that's how you check. Completing various tasks will reward you with faction tokens, which can be redeemed at the specific faction character like Devrim. So for example, for the EDZ, I've collected tokens around this area by completing various tasks and opening chests. In order to raise my reputation with the faction, I brought them back to Devrim, and in the middle of the screen, I've exchanged my tokens to increase my reputation. Now, you may be wondering what you get for increasing your reputation level. Well, each time you fill the bar completely and level it up, you'll get a reward pack with a few items relating to that specific faction. It's a pretty good source of new gear as you level up. At certain levels, you'll also unlock more gear and better types of items to purchase from the specific person with Glimmer. It's always a good idea to maximize your reputation and collect rewards as you play through the game. And maxing out a faction's reputation gives you the best gear selection possible, and you can also get some really good engrams just for having high reputation. Long story short, I really like reputation in this game. I think it was a little bit convoluted and it was changed several times in the original Destiny, but it seems like they got it right in this game. Finally, let's talk about the map. It was always frustrating in the original game how there was no map to reference to in the large open areas, especially when the game asks you to travel around and memorize where you need to go. Of course, if you played the original game, you got used to it, but fortunately, Bungie kindly added maps to Destiny 2, making it much easier to navigate and track almost everything that you can do. This is an extremely simple tip, but instead of holding the back button on Xbox One or I believe the huge pad button on PlayStation 4, you can click the start and back buttons simultaneously to instantly open your map. It saves maybe half a second or a second. If you're someone like me who wants to know how to do stuff as quickly as possible, then this is just one of those little time saving things. So in the map, any sort of objective can be tracked, anything that you need to do. And once you track it, that will provide waypoints on your HUD so you don't have to constantly refer to it. And since you don't have a sparrow to start, these open locations like the EDZ will have key locations to fast travel to. So remember to use these so you don't waste a bunch of time just running back and forth when you could just fast travel. One of my favorite changes so far is to public events with the maps. I want to make a longer video explaining exactly how these work, so we're not going to go into that. But for now, you can track when these start straight from your map. It's got a countdown timer right there. It gives you a good idea if you can actually make it in time and reap the rewards of those activities, which so far I've heard can give you exotic engram super early in the game. But it's definitely worth checking out while you're completely completing the story. Besides main objectives, the map designates many of the side activities you can do in the game, including lost sectors and searching for chests with these little tiny white icons. And as you complete each one, the icon will gray out, signifying that it's been completed. Just looking at the map, there's a lot of space and ground to cover, and I haven't been to a lot of it. So I'm sure there's plenty of hidden stuff around that's not clearly marked, and hopefully I can share that with you guys here on the channel. Overall, I'm super happy with this map feature. It should have been in the original game, obviously, but they definitely got it right in Destiny 2. All right, guys, that's it for me. Just a small collection of helpful things to remember as you begin your journeys in Destiny 2. Obviously, that's not all of the helpful things to know, and I have a lot of you watching this video, so I'd love to ask you guys, what beginner's tips do you have for people just starting the game? We can make this comment section a nice place for people to refer to as they are just starting their journey in the game. Be sure and share your beginner's tips in the comment section below. Today I shared a few tips for a head start in Destiny 2. 
Next time, we will cover more Destiny 2 here on the channel, so stay tuned for daily Destiny 2 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for lots of Destiny 2 content, plenty of things planned for many weeks to come. So, I hope you guys are excited. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you next time.